So I've been thinking lately about the steps when it comes to learning to paint. And as you know, I've we've recorded a few videos lately that were just silent. And I thought this time I would babble on a little bit while you watched me paint rather than just have a silence with the video. And um, rather than just record a podcast, you may as well watch me paint while I talk. So this is a painting that I've been working on for a little while of my dog. I'll show you the finished painting when, when I'm done the video here. Um, so most of us, when we start to learn to paint, we come from a drawing background, a background where you, you know, you're sketching as a kid, you're copying cartoons, you're, you're um, putting drawings in all your notebooks at school. Most people discover their appreciation for art or their desire to create by drawing. And once you've gotten a little bit of a handle on drawing, most people then go into shading. So just putting darks and lights somehow in your drawing. So learning to see the actual values of things is a really big step when it comes to learning how to make something look realistic. Now we're gonna we're gonna be talking for the from the realm of realism here because that's what we're working with, but um, most drawings start out as line drawings and then you start shading and then you start to get an appreciation of what the actual lights and darks are, creating light and shadow. So that's a big step when it comes to refining your drawing, learning to, to create a realistic image. And after that, once you start to be able to see value, and often this is combined, the steps are all muddled together, but after that, there, there becomes a desire to throw in color. And in my case, I worked with pastel. Some people begin with colored pencil, others jump right into paint, but working with some sort of a drawing medium like pastel was an easier transition. And uh, one of that, one of those reasons is because painting comes with color mixing and with the pastels, the mixing was a little more straightforward. The pastels in essence were pre-mixed and when you lay them on, it became fairly easy to see how they would mix with each other. Meanwhile, as you can see here, I've just been working on the paws, uh, rubbing out with a Q-tip, adding second layers of color to this little block in I've been doing. The final layers have been done on the upper part of the painting, but the, the step she is sitting on is just the block in and the paws that I'm working on now is just the block in that you're seeing. So painting, painting is a, it's like, even if you're very proficient with drawing, painting is like learning a new language. I remember when I first started trying to paint, I tried oils, oh, back when I was in high school and they were a muddled mess. I don't even know where I got them, but I don't remember doing more than one painting and I remember being really frustrated. And that's one of the reasons I started this blog is because working with oils is actually easier than other mediums in many ways, but it's kind of harder to learn. You, you need to have uh, distinct steps and I felt that by showing them it would be easier to learn them and save you guys a lot of trouble compared to what uh, I went through trying to figure out how to paint. So if you get into the realm of painting, color mixing becomes a big issue and it's a matter of learning how to see the colors first because that's that's easier said than done but also how to create the color out of the paints that you have because we do not have the same range of color and value that is in nature. You will never be able to paint something as light and bright as the sun, and you'll never be able to paint something as dark as the deepest blacks. Our paints just don't come that way. So you have a limited range to work with, and you have to make it work for you. So in order to be better at mixing color, I rather accidentally stumbled on the idea of just using a very limited paint palette. So by only choosing one red, one yellow, one blue, 
and then black and white, uh, at that time I was working in acrylic, I gave myself fewer options because I knew if it needed to be bluer, there was only one choice. Or if it needed to be more yellow, there was only one choice. And that really worked well for a long time. I most, almost all the paintings I did in the first 10 years of my career were done with that very limited palette. Occasionally I would add something more if it was doing something that was quite purple or had really cool light to it or something like that. But for the most part, a really limited palette worked well for me. So once you get a little bit proficient at color mixing and once you've kind of learned how to put the paint on, then most artists will start to experiment with how they want the paint to look. So with the application of it. And you can look around a gallery or an art show and you can see many, many different ways of applying the same medium, be it acrylic or oils, and very, very different looking paintings because of the way they're applied, because of the tools that are used. And that becomes your own personal style, how you ultimately choose to apply the paint, whether you apply it really smoothly or quite loosely or a combination of, like I often do. And sometimes your style can really be um, the most obvious thing that a viewer will notice that they will recognize your painting by the way you apply the paint. More often it is more about how the artist sees things about their vision, but quite a, quite a bit of the time you will see an artist that applies the paint in a certain way and becomes known for that application. And don't get me wrong, that's usually an evolution of how, how you apply the paint. You start out one way and if you look back paintings over the years or you'll see as you move forward in your career that your application, the way you put the paint down, will change much more than your vision. I know that over the years I have gone from extremely detailed acrylics to quite loose oils and all the time it still has a consistency that people recognize as my work because of the way I see things. And often they will not even notice that I've completely changed. I will think I've done a complete about face and they won't even see a difference. So um, your, your own, the application of the paint might not be as obvious to everyone else as it is to you, but it is a big part about learning, is learning how you want the paint to be put down on the canvas. Now the next thing that I went through in my journey, and I think is kind of a common way to approach things, is you go from copying things the way they are in the photo and gradually changing the, the, so the style of application looks a little bit more like yours, like you want it to, but then you start to think about color a little differently and how the colors harmonize and how you would change the background colors or how you would add light here or color there or the things that you would do to make a painting look a little bit different as far as the color harmony goes. And that's, that's often the next more advanced step once you start to get things to look realistic in the way that you originally started making them look realistic, trying to look for a real um, lifelike image and now you've, you're feeling like a little bit confident with that then you start to play around with color. And you step away from the photo. You start to gradually make your painting look less like the photo. Either just by adding things or by combining photos or by totally changing the color harmony, by raising the key of it or lowering the key of the, the original image. Not so much even with adjusting the photo beforehand, but with the way you're applying the paint, the way you want to see it. And once you start to move away from the photo, that's when you really start to come into your own, I think. Once you can not so much even say, this is a bad photo and I can make it good. It's more about this photo is realism as the camera sees it and instead I'm going to put in realism as I see it because the camera 
does give you information, and it's very good for the information, for what it is, the tool that it is, but if you work from life at all, you will notice right away that the camera doesn't capture the way your eye does. And you can, you can learn those things without working from life. It's really nice to work from life if you can, whether you're painting an apple sitting in front of you or a person, it doesn't really matter that you actually paint a dog sitting in front of you. You know, if you can, it's a really good exercise, but learning to work from looking at things or learning to observe so that you see things in a different way that the camera does and learning to see where the camera is falling short, where you could improve on the image even though it's not like the photo. Trusting your own instincts instead of trusting the camera. So meanwhile, here I am painting on this dog's paws. You can see that I'm just gradually lightening. There is more detail in the upper part of the painting than there is in this area. If you've been watching me paint, you may have noticed this before, but it's possibly a little bit surprising how light the touch is. It's almost like I'm barely holding the brush. Um, I heard an artist once refer to it as don't let your brush touch the canvas. Now, I wouldn't say that's the case with mine, but it is, you're almost lose, lifting the paint off the brush without pushing into the canvas with it. Does that make any sense? Because it's, it's um, I guess I'm just trying to emphasize that it's a light touch. And that's what seems to work with me. I've got a layer underneath that in this case was dry because it's, the painting has been on the go for a little while. I can't keep it wet. I'd sooner work on a wet image, but I'd sooner have the whole thing blocked in before I started doing the second layer. So I block it all in and some areas are going to be dry. So then I'll be working on a, a dry image, but I still want to stroke the paint on quite lightly Partly so I don't lift the paint underneath, if it's in this case right now, I'm, it's at least the third layer, so I've got the second layer is wet. So by going quite lightly with this lighter color, which is a, a white that's had a little bit of yellow and red added to it, by going quite lightly with it, a light touch that is, it won't lift the color from underneath. So I'm getting to the end of what I'm going to show you here with this painting session. Some of these areas are now complete. Just using a Q-tip whenever I need to lift something off that's in the wrong place. Well, let me give you a little look at my reference here. I worked from a photo I took of my dog, Paige. This is a little video of her I shot just this morning. And here's the finished painting. I'll give you a little closer look at the parts of the painting that you didn't see up close. This is oil on a cotton canvas. I used water-soluble oil, the Cobra brand, and this painting measures 36 inches by 18 inches. So she's about life size in the painting.